Welcome back to the WAC Podcast. Eric Danner with you flying solo today. We're now joined by the head coach at Utah Tech, Paul Peterson. Coach, welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Hey, Coach, I appreciate you taking some time out. A big week ahead for you. Uh, we talked about this at WAC Football Media Day back in July about, uh, and actually the year before as well, uh, when the Southern Utah was coming in, your built-in rivalry, and and now the week is here. So I imagine your schedule this week, uh, you've got to be talking to a lot of different people and everybody's telling you to to beat uh, Southern Utah this week. Yeah, this is, this is exciting. It's exciting for... I think both programs, um, it'll be great for our communities. Um, it's definitely going to be a, a fun game with a, with a lot of energy in it. And it sounds like a big crowd. Um, I know Coach Fitz is doing a great job up there and and he's matched the win total from from last year. So um, he's got them uh, playing playing hard. And we're, we're just excited to get up there and showcase what we can do. Now, you also mentioned uh, when I talked to you at Football Media Day that you have a, a long history at Southern Utah. Yeah. This, uh, I, I know you, there, there's a lot of good-natured uh, ribbing back and forth yeah. between the schools, but at the same time, this is a place where uh, basically you got your start. Yeah, exactly. You know, Ed Lamb uh, took over a program that had lost 18 games in a row, and um, I had an opportunity to join him uh, back in what year would that be? 2007. And was there for four years and were able to, you know, turn into a winning, some multiple winning seasons. And then after I left, they got some conference championships. So probably me, me leaving helped them get a little better. Uh, but it was definitely a, a great place to, to, you know, I had one of my sons there um, and, and um, enjoyed, enjoyed the scenery and the, the canyons and I enjoy fishing. So just right up the, right up the canyon there. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a great place with great people, hardworking blue collar town. Um but you know, I, I know I recognize the the hate, I guess. And I don't know if hate's the right word. Rivalry, I guess, <laughs> with the people from St. George when there was only Dixie High School and Cedar High School and throwing rocks at the bus and you know, no one's gonna rocks. get gas there. Yeah. yeah. Not even so, eggs. Everybody fights going, at the gas station. Pill? I'm sure there's I'm sure there's more than that. But you know, they 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 said uh some of the old timers when I first got here made sure they let me know about this rivalry and tell me, you know, I'd I'd rather run out of gas and, and coast down the coast down the hill than than get gas in Cedar City and just some just some fun ribbon back and forth like that. But they they really mean it. So, <laughs> and this rivalry it's been dormant, uh, I believe, more than a decade now. Obviously, uh, Dixie State now Utah Tech transitioning uh, from D two to D one, and that was a big part of the reason that uh, there wasn't any games played the last decade or so. So I imagine that has this particular game. Uh, was, was even circled more uh, for you guys yeah I think so you know more and more even even ground right I think um, you know SU's uh, had some conference championships in the last few years and uh, Demario Warren and, and Ed Lamb uh, before him have done, did a really good job of bringing them uh, to the big sky I was there when they got got jumped into the big sky conference and um, uh, so so a, a good a good program just need to do a little bit of rebuild. And that's, I think that's what coach Fitz is going to do. And us obviously making this jump being our uh, second season in transition. Um, you know, we've got to prove that we belong at this level and this is a great game for us to do that. Now you had uh, probably the toughest schedule in the nation in uh, the FCS last year. Uh, not much easier this year either. coach. Yeah. I mean, you've had some tough games to start with Sacramento state, uh, a ranked team, uh, then you were able to come back home, beat Shadron State uh, pretty handily, especially in that second half. And then uh, you go to Weber, another ranked team. Uh, as far as three games in this year versus last year, how, how do you feel about your team right now? Yeah, I, I think we're much further along than we were last year. You know, playing those ranked teams help us. It gave us a little sense of urgency of where we want to get to. Um, I believe our first season of, of playoff eligibility here is not for another couple of years. So, um, you know, as far as we're concerned that way, we've got a little bit of time to be able to develop, but we're, I was really appreciated the WAC conference and in, in letting us be able to compete for a WAC championship. That means a lot to us and to our program. And that's what we're going to be fighting for, for this year. I know we got some really good teams and we were ranked at the bottom, but I, I feel like uh, if our team continues to improve and we play some really good teams and show that we can, we can, we can hang with them. We just need to be a little bit more consistent and, and uh, finish off some of these games. But um, yeah, we're, 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 we're excited for this, uh, this tough, tough schedule. It makes you, makes you, makes you better. And, and um, 
Uh, you got to iron out some kinks, and there's a little room for error when you're playing really good teams. And we saw that the first two weeks. First two coach, offensively, your team, I look at the WAC leaderboards, and, and it's a lot of Utah Tech uh, right there at the top. Let's start with the quarterback position. Yeah. Kobe Tracy coming in, leading the WAC in passing yards, total offense. He, he's a guy that uh, came in uh, during your first game and has really uh, seems to click with your guys' offense. Yeah, I'm I'm proud of Kobe. You know, he had a little quarterback battle in camp uh with with Victor Gabalas and and um you know, we felt like the team voted Victor as a captain, which says a lot about his character and I uh, just had a had a tough tough first outing and Kobe was ready to go when his opportunity came and he's he's taken advantage of it up up until this point. So a guy that uh starting the season was uh, a backup. We were planning on playing both of them but has come in and done some really good things and he continues to improve each, each week, uh, making some big time throws. And, and um, you know, he's got some things that he needs to work on, but he's, he's definitely aware of those. Uh, he's clicking with the receivers and he knows um, where he needs to go with the football most of the time. And if we can get him, if we can get him to, uh, to go where he's supposed to all the time, we're going to be uh, put on some more points and more yards. And then at running back, Quali Conley, he was our player of the week a couple of weeks ago. He leads the whack in rushing, uh, with four touchdowns as well. Did you expect uh, Quali to make that uh, next step like he has this year? Yeah, you know, Quali did a really good job for us in COVID spring when we played those five games. Um, he was our premier back that we that we showcased. So we knew that he could do that. Um, and, and then we had an injured guy come back and take a lot of reps uh, last fall. And and he saw himself more as, a, as in the number two role and to get as many touches. But him as the premier back, um, quality somebody that we want to get a certain amount of touches to get him involved in the pass and the run game. Um, and he's, he's got a bright future for us too. And, and the leader in the whack in receiving uh, right now, Joey Hobart. And this is a name old guys like me. I'm like, uh, Joey Hobart. That sounds familiar. Yeah. His dad, Billy Joe Hobart, uh, NFL quarterback. Joey Hobart has really come in and, and been one of the top receivers in the league this year. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is he number one in the nation? He might be number one in the nation right now as far as receiving goes. I mean, they don't – They don't. once we're in this probation, they don't carry our stats on. But um, he's done a great job for us. Definitely definitely, a guy that understands the offense, understands where, what windows needs. So he's just a tough, old-school type football player that you would rally around. You know, I told our team – you know, you, you, you're in a, you're in a, you're in a fight, you know, you meet, meet a couple guys at the, at the gas station for a fight. And he's the first guy I'm calling. Cause I know he'd go till the very end. And you can see that in a football game um, it, that, that he does that and competes at a high level, fun to watch really good uh, rack, you know, um, and, and um, has the ability to take the house every time he touches the ball. So we just want to keep trying to give it to him. Um, he's awesome. We, uh, we actually also just throw this in there too. Um, uh, he's a captain. He wasn't captain at the beginning of the year, made him a captain this week. And so he's definitely one of our leaders. Well, it, like I said, Billy Joe Hobart was a name I, I was familiar with. And, and also I'm watching your game against Shadron state and the color analyst, Jay Schrader, uh, yeah. former Super Bowl uh, winning right. quarterback. I, I didn't realize he had ties to the uh, St. George and Utah tech. Yeah. He he's down here. Um, He's he's an awesome he's an awesome guy. And they're both both him and and uh uh Joey's dad are big dudes. <laughs> they're big guys. <laughs> well maybe maybe he has some eligibility left if, if yeah, you need him yeah. again. Uh coach, how does your uh week change? I, I know you have luncheons, those kind of things going on. Does anything change this week with with Southern Utah? And obviously it's a it's a bus trip, it's not a flight yeah. like like most of your travel is right. I, I think it's awesome. Just like Weber, um, you know, a little bit of a longer bus ride up there, but being able to stay in state and, and close, we're going to treat this like a home game. So we're, we, you know, we let the boys sleep in their own bed. We'll just, we'll just bump everything up an hour because it's 45 minutes up the road. Um, so that's, that's, that's going to be nice. You know, as far as, as far as like our practice schedule, sticking to the same routine, same schedule, uh, just a little bit more sense of urgency uh, in, in in the way we're we're conducting our business, and this is going to be a fun game for our guys. Well, Coach, I uh, want to wish you the the best of luck uh, this uh, upcoming week and and season, and uh, we'll be uh, uh, looking for you down there. I know Kendra is going to be making the trip to Cedar City, so cool. you might be uh, have a chance to chat with her uh, this weekend as well. Awesome, awesome. Anything we could do to to pump the brand of Utah Tech. We're, we're excited the growth. We're excited our players are playing 
doing everything we're asking them to. And so we're just, we just need to get past them, break that ceiling. And this is a good opportunity for our guys. All right. That is Paul Peterson, head coach at Utah Tech. Coming up next, we're going to talk to Demetrius House, our new assistant director of communications in the WAC. You're listening to the WAC podcast. Thanks for listening to the WAC podcast. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And check out our website at WACSports.com.